Okay, we just started recording, so hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our Banach Center kickoff meeting, uh, the World Championship. Okay. Oh, Elmar, hello, Mexico. It's so good to see you. Um, so, yes, yes, I like to see people from America here. Yeah. Um, okay, so without any further ado, Andrew, remember, have 45 minutes, including discussion, quantum symmetries. The Zoom is yours. Take it away. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> so good evening, everybody. This, I mean, I hope I will not even take this 45 minutes as this is a kickoff meeting. So I was trying to present uh, basically an overview what we wrote in this chapter on quantum symmetries of graph system algebras and just, you know, share the ideas that are there and expand a little bit, uh, a little bit on, on it. So let me just, you know, move. So this is what we wrote, uh, objectives. And this is the sort of, you know, the abstract of this, of this chapter, that the aim is to study in full generality, let me just quote it, notion of quantum symmetry in isometric groups in graph system algebra. So, <clears throat> well, including high and rank graphs. So basically, you know, all the graph system algebras that we can work with. Now, why? I mean, uh, when, when I was asking myself the question why is just that, first of all, we have a very nice uh, set of examples of something which are non-commutative, say topological spaces, graph system algebras as non-commutative topological spaces because we're working with, with system algebras, but we know that by the examples that we know of, of, of objects that are graph system algebras, we know that they have symmetries and that these symmetries are important. And well, the basic examples, I mean, this is just like the matrix algebra, which is just an example of graph system algebras. I will certainly not name all of them, Tepley's algebra, multiple quantum spheres, starting with the two dimensional ones. And of course, SUQ2 and you can you can you can go on with many many other examples of uh, things that as system algebras are graph system algebras but we know them also on some different level like like uh, 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 quantum spheres of suq2 which have some additional structure and this structure for instance includes uh, well the existence i mean the includes you know the the notion of being non-commutative manifold, so something that relates to metric, something that relates to the spectral triples. So since we know that, I mean, basically SUQ2 is, which, which is also a Hopf algebra, compact quantum group, which we, when we know that have, that those objects have symmetries, so this is a natural question, an absolutely sort of standard one, can one associate with the structure of graphs algebras, which is very, very regular re relating the algebras to certain graphs, direct graphs, can we relate the symmetries to this structure? So the, the first thing is, I mean, if we have, if we have in our project, you know, that we have uh, algebras that one can see, so can mm -hmm. one also see the symmetries of these algebras? So to start with, what is the definition? And this is, you know, that's what we also use uh, the definition by, uh, from the seminal paper by Wong. Uh, uh, what is a, a quantum symmetry group? So this is just a standard thing. So when you have a compact quantum group, you have a system algebra and you have a, a unital star morphism. So this is just the, here the, uh, what we uh, see is the is the coaction. It is the uh, right coaction. Sorry, I mean I think there's something wrong with the tensor product over over there in one formula, which satisfies the standard uh, standard uh, uh, properties that one can require considering the co-product in the co uh, in the compact quantum group and the and the co-unit, and. Certain 
condition that here is expressed in one way. I mean, this is the original definition by Wonga. It could be expressed also in different ways. And this is also mentioned that uh, uh, there are equivalent definitions. So basically that if you have, a, a, if you take out of the compact quantum group, which is a system algebra, take a dense hop sub, sub star algebra, then there exists a dense subalgebra of the algebra B, so that this is a right coaction. Okay, so this is the definition what's a left action also here in this right coaction. And then uh, that what Wong defines as a quantum automorphism group of B is in the category of quantum transformation groups, which was the previous definition defined a quantum transformation group and you know this set with set instruction this is a category if there is a universal final object it's a final object in this category of course the question is whether it exists and this is also you know uh, included in the and this is also important in the, included in this in a paper by Wong that this is not necessarily the case. So you might have the situation when this uh, does not exist in the category of all quantum transformation groups. So when you consider it, then, the, then this final object doesn't exist. So there is a remedy, remedy when you just restrict the transformation groups, restrict to something which is, well, smaller so for instance i mean and then then i will give you know three examples and two of them will be more relevant you know for since this is what we uh, what we basically uh, stated in the in, in the project to look to look at it but i mean the, the third one is just an example that one can and, and it's also related. I mean, in, I mean, it's shown that in some cases it's related and the same or, or equivalent to to other definitions. So first, you re, you restrict you know the transformation groups by state. So imagine you have a, a just continuous linear con continuous function on the algebra, and you just define the uh, quantum automorphisms group of the pair, so you take the algebra and the functional, just universal object in the category of all quantum transformations that preserve this uh, functional phi. And this is also, you know, there's been, uh, there's been done in the original definition of Wong and uh, shown that in some cases when this uh, universal object general doesn't exist i mean it exists i mean when you restrict it to be those that preserve those uh, continuous functions the second which is relevant for the project especially because there's a <clears throat> entire section you know the devoted to spectral triples is the definition of what are the quantum isometry groups and this is due to basically goswami and bomwick so imagine you have an additional data to your uh, system algebra B, which consists of uh, spectral triples, so then subalgebra, Hilbert space, representation on the Hilbert space and Dirac operator. And then what do you consider? You consider compact quantum groups, which are transformation groups, but which have additionally unitary representation on H and that commutes D. So here D with A. And this is the idea of uh, quantum isometry groups generally. So here, especially, I mean that we have a full uh, section of the project, I mean, devoted to spectral triples, then uh, it's a natural question, I mean, to consider whenever you have a spectral triple for a graph system algebra, well, is there a good notion and can we see what is the good notion and what to compute these uh, quantum isometric groups? And 
Another example, which uh, which is is that one can consider, one can consider, for instance, you know, restriction of symmetry groups, restriction of these transformation groups, just with some additional structure. And there's an example. I mean, uh, something which is called orthogonal filtration, and uh, there's the re relevant uh, uh, reference is the paper by Banika and Skarsky. Okay, so these are the sort of notions that will appear and the notions that are relevant. So the general symmetry, quantum symmetry groups, the symmetry groups which is with respect to a continuous functional and quantum isometry groups which are, which are the most relevant for the project. All right, but there's a, of course a question since we have, when we consider, you know, graphs, the star algebra, of course, you know, there's an algebra which is given by generators and relations, but as a system algebra, we can define it in many different ways. So for instance, I mean, we can define, you know, the uh, quantum SU2 system algebra by as a, as a or, a pol or, 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 some, or, or some quantum spheres by the generators and the relations coming from the graph, but we can define it, of course, in a different way. I mean, as, um, as, a, as an algebra, we, Said, but, but of course the completion, I mean, will be the same. So the system algebras, they will be isomorphic. Now, but having this graph structure, well, a graph is an object. And there's also a notion of a quantum symmetry. And actually there's been, there's been several notions. What is a quantum symmetry? So what's a sort of a symmetry group in a general sense, so in a quantum sense, of a finite graph, so a finite directed graph. And there's, a, there's of course a question, I mean, whether there's a relation between these two. So the relation between the quantum symmetry of a graph system algebra and quantum symmetry in this sense of an object which is just a, just a, a directed graph. And, uh, sorry, sorry, Andre, uh, but in order to make this theorem meaningful, you better explain what you mean by the quantum symmetry of a finite graph and this, why you will, this, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this will come. This okay. will. Come. And why is the problem to have multiple edges? If I understand correctly, this quantum symmetry of a finite graph, it's a subgroup of the uh, quantum permutation group, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. I will, I will have the definition later okay. on. Okay. I will have the definition on yeah. the next slide. I okay. mean, I'm just stating, you know, what is the result here you know, of this paper by uh, Schmidt and Weber, which you see on the left hand side of the slide. Uh, and basically, you know, this is a theorem stated loosely. So it's not, I mean, I just stated, you know, basically the idea of a theorem. So the, the idea and the, and the main result of the paper stated not in, you know, very, I mean, this is it. In a sense, in I mean, in precise terms, but of, but of course stated stated but mostly as an idea. So, uh, uh, what is the so this is the definition due to Banica of a, a quantum symmetry of a graph, and the definition is just I mean, I give here the definition. What is the definition? And and the statement uh, that was previously was was quite right uh, 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 said by somebody from the audience. But I mean, I stated as a just a definition uh, by generators and relations. So when you have a directed graph that has an adjac adjacency matrix, which basically you know, tells you that there's one, if there's a link between, between the, the, ver uh, the vertices and zero if there's no. Uh, and this is why you know, this is this uh, matrix here is the zero and one. And uh, basically, you know, this is this is defined. This is the algebra defined by the by by these relations that are given here. Now, uh, the statement. Oh, sorry. The statement is that when you have this quantum symmetry of a finite graph. Which is due to Banica. There are there's uh, there are some, there were some other definitions and there were some other notions. Uh, it appears that this is a, a quantum symmetry, so a 
a symmetry, so a transformation of a graph system algebra. Now, there's one thing which is worth remarking, namely, there's a paper by Jarder and Mandel, which is quantum symmetry of graph system algebras, which are associated with connected graph. And then it shows, well, it considers a certain category of symmetries, which are basically, you know, faithful linear action on a graph system algebra, and shows that uh, this uh, symmetry of a graph, so this result of uh, uh, Schmidt and Weber gives the, is a subgroup, is a quantum subgroup of, of this final object in a category of this quantum automorphism group that they consider. So it should be seen that this is not, I mean, in some cases, this is, they, they are equal, but there's a, I think, you know, the, the, the sort of the simplest example is the, is the graph that is uh, uh, just, you know, two vertices and two uh, edges between them. Uh, so two points, so sort of complete graph where the where those quantum uh, so the quantum automorphism of the graph is uh, as far as i remember only g2 and the quantum automorphism of the graph system algebra is much bigger so this is the result uh, I, I will have the reference to this paper possibly also later andre just a quick sanity check in case your graph consists only of vertices will you get back the wong's quantum permutation group Yes, I don't remember. Well, I think yes, yes, right. Possibly yes. Are, so you you mean you mean there are no edges? Yes, yeah, no right. edges. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now I see why you don't want multiple edges. Okay. Now, so let's come to the objectives of the uh, of the of the project that we have so the first one is uh, just you know relates to this result by Schwinder and Weber so we know that once we have a graph there's a notion by Banneke of this quantum symmetry of this graph with certain restrictions we know that this is related to the quantum transformation groups quantum symmetry of a resulting graph system algebra. So the first objective is, well, how does it work with the higher rank graphs? So whether we are able to, to arrive at the definition of a quantum symmetry group of a higher rank graph system algebra. And there's also, you know, here a mention uh, uh, which we have, which I would uh, think is uh, interesting in the reserves but it deserves absolutely, you know, sort of wide guess uh, considerations. And namely, uh, there's also a notion of something which are non-commutative graphs that appear in the context of quantum channel, quantum information theory, which are basically uh, some sets of operators that, you know, in special cases encode the definition of, a, I mean, encode graphs, just usually graphs usually directed graphs. So uh, there's a question, I mean, when, when we have this non-commutative graphs, is there a relevant and, you know, can it be linked to a relevant notion of uh, quantum symmetries of those non-commutative graphs? So here, you know, the basic thing and the basic starting thing, you know, to, to work is, of course, you know, this seminal paper by Schmidt and Weber, which, gives this result for, for, for usual graph system algebras with certain restrictions, of course. And then, you know, there's a question, you know, what restrictions and what uh, possible structure, you know, one needs to, for the higher rank graphs to have this uh, quantum, uh, uh, quantum symmetry. The second objective is, related, you know, to those notions of restricted symmetries and here restricted symmetries by the KM 
by some functionalists, so basically by quantum st KMS states. So KMS quantum symmetry groups, so we formally define determining uh, quantum symmetry groups that preserves a family of KMS states over graph system algebras and provide conditions under which they are isomorphic to each other as quantum groups. Now, there are some results which are quite recent, as you can see, the publication dates, again by Jardar and Mandel. Uh, so first they started, uh, they studied uh, quantum symmetries of graph system algebras, certain graph system algebras, uh, at, but for very specific KMS states, but very specific states at critical inverse temperature and showing, you know, uh, what these are. And of course, you know, the, 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 again, the starting point would be the another paper by those uh, two authors, which is just uh, on the invariance of KMS states on graph system algebra. And that is, this, that is under classical and quantum symmetries. So, so far, I mean, I haven't been able, you know, to uh, see whether, uh, there's been there's been other results, you know, for generic uh, uh, and for families of 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 states of a graph system algebra. And there's also one remark uh, uh, to this point, uh, namely, there's been a paper uh, last year by again uh, authors from India, Batterji, Jordan, and Sutan Roy about extension or something like extension of symmetries, quantum symmetries in this sense, not to compact quantum groups, but uh, extension to braided quantum symmetries, braided compact quantum groups. And again, you know, stating very, very briefly, the results, uh, they, well, they, they just uh, state that if there's a, finite directed graph without things. So there are some technical conditions with the KMS states exist. Then they show that there's a universal, that there's a, this quantum symmetry in this universal sense, but also braided in a sense of braided quantum group that acts linear. So this is a linear faithful uh, on the graph system algebra and preserving the KMS state. So I'm sorry, is, Andre, I'm sorry, but I, but, yeah. but I would like to understand, what does it mean that the quantum group acts linearly? So can you give me an example of a nonlinear action and a linear action? A linear action is that, uh, I mean, that's been defined by, I think, uh, again, the Jordan and Mandel in this, uh, in, the, in the paper, and let me just, I mean, I would need to uh, look up the precise definition. This is this is how the how the action of this uh, symmetry uh, uh, is on the on the generators. Let me just if you. Okay, that's what I expected. Yes. Yeah, I I don't I don't have you know I mean it would be better you know to write it just. But I mean, I would then then I would have to you know dig it dig it up how it was. No, no. But you basically answered my question. That's what I expected. I wanted okay, the confirmation. Good. But I, I'm also. Could you just uh, really, in a nutshell, uh, tell us uh, what is a braided uh, compact quantum group? So, so what exactly does it mean that you have a braided compact quantum group? Oh, uh, okay. So this is a braided compact quantum group. Is just a well, compact quantum group in a braided category. So it simply means that the uh, roughly speaking, that the uh, that the co-product uh, is uh, that the co-product is a morphism in a braided category. It's an algebra morphism, but then you you have the algebra structure uh, on the tensor product in a braided in a braided category. So the this is braided. So would I be right in thinking that every compact quantum group is a braided compact quantum group because it can take the trivial braiding? Oh, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? So every but, compact quantum group is, of course, braided with a trivial braid. Absolutely. Okay. And then you have some fancy examples where uh, you yeah. can 
transform. They are fancy example. examples of uh, braided quantum groups, and they are fancy examples of braided quantum groups uh, that actually are also symmetries and symmetries like of also of polyspheres, for instance. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is the this is sort of possibility that of course you know the symmetries could go beyond a little bit beyond you know the, the the compact quantum rules but you can go to this braided category now the objective three which is very much linked you know to the to the other part of that project which is uh, related to spectral triples and in some sense also you know to these to the metric aspects possibly so to the all things with the matrix, sort of metric structure, and, and then possibly uh, looking at those objects as uh, quantum metric spaces, is the is the notion of isometry groups. So the notion of isometry groups that was due to Goswami and Momwick, basically, and the 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 idea is to just look up. A, what are the compact quantum isometry groups of this graph system algebras and of course possibly higher rank system algebras but of course to have it what do we need to what do we need to have is we need to have a notion of those uh, spectral triples now what are the uh, possible starting point so here i list listed one well not very old but so say uh, reference from so around uh, 13 years 14 years ago on non-committed manifolds from graphs and k graphs cis algebras which gives uh, a range of uh, uh, constructions of semi-finite spectral triplets which could be which could be a starting point, but of course this is not only the not the only possibility that we might know. We might know that you know for some, at least for some of the graph system algebras, we might have you know the spectral triples coming from, so to say, other directions. And this is you know this is also very much linked. You know, I mean th this is linked you know, to the symmetries. Spectral triples are linked to the symmetries, in in some sense in both ways. Because once having a spectral triple for an algebra, so in this case, graph system algebras, one can ask the question, what are the quantum isometry groups? But on the other, on the other hand, you know, for many of the spectral triples, it usually or it has been done the other way around. So having the symmetry structure, so having the symmetry, having some sort of a symmetry, we can ask what is the spectral triple that you know for which this will be like the isometry group so uh, this is for instance there's been you know for the polysphere you know construction of uh, spectral triples i mean it's somehow like derived from the symmetry so this is very so they hear the interaction between the construction of spectral triples construction of examples of uh, metric structures and isometry groups are very, very much intertwined. So this is possibly the uh, the point where the interaction between those uh, two parts of the project will be will be very much fruitful. And I expect you know that that much more on these uh, things and the references and uh, these uh, the ideas you know for the spectral triples will be presented later in in later talks. All right, so that will be basically everything I wanted, you know, to to say here. I mean, I have some, you know, for, for, for the practical things, I mean, because this is a sort of a kickoff meeting where we think, you know, about uh, boosting the project, starting the project. I think it would be very much helpful to have some sort of, I think, you know, Piotr, you will be having the, web page of the project right correct yes yes so it would be very nice to have yes. a section when well 
repository of uh, uh, papers to cite. Yes, exactly. So sort yeah. of a repository, possibly yeah. internal, because I mean we can make it public, but but you know with all the PDFs of all the relevant things, you know, collected together, so that you know it's very much you know uh, very easily accessible for for everybody. And especially, so I mean, I I can I can start preparing it, but I mean, uh, you know, some of the things you know I might have omitted uh, that appeared, you know, in the in the in the last couple of months. And this is very and 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 this will be very 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 helpful to have it. Yeah, I, I agree, and we might even do it in such a way that, say, uh, whatever structure we design, management boards, whatever, but basically, however you call it, it's basically the seven of us who uh, are work package leaders, we yeah. have responsibility uh, to take care of that all the scientific data is easily available, and then uh, also that we somehow overview the progress and are ready for reporting when time comes. So there, I see no problem that seven people have access to such a page and, and update okay. yeah. regularly. And since you mentioned it, let me take this opportunity to request all the speakers, so it includes me, I'm also asking myself, uh, please send uh, to this email of a conference, not to my email, to the email of a conference, the corrected slides of your talk. So, so you have a change to correct your tensor product. I guess it was very heavy and just fell down uh, on the floor near Alpha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, so, so uh, that's a request for all of you guys, right? Uh, that today, after you give your talks and uh, uh, correct all typos, uh, which might be over there, you just send to this 23 graphacomin.pl PL, this PDF file, and in due course, uh, we will just hang it on, on, on the conference page. Okay, I think we should proceed with questions. We still have 30 minutes. Uh, do you have some examples of a, system, a, a graph system algebra that is of the form C of G, where G is a quantum group for braided quantum group and that is not SUQ2 and not the permutation group? Once again, could could you please? I'm sort of uh, what kind of uh, graph system algebra can appear as C of G, where G is a quantum loop, and uh, this G is not classically known as uh, SUQ two or the subgroup of the quantum permutation group. Let's say. Okay, so so any other examples when the when yeah. the graph system algebras are are just uh, quantum groups apart from SUQ2 and yeah. permutation. For example, I'm really interested in can all the quantum deformation of compact. Uh, yeah, I I so. mean, actually, actually, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody knows? No. Oh, and then the second question is, um, uh, so far, do we know some criterion for the existence of some KMS states on a graph system algebra? Oh, that's a nice question, yes. Because these two questions are related, because if you don't have a KMS state, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right, yeah. yeah. So the, the um, basically, you know, the, okay, so let me just, I don't, uh, what are the, so uh, there's a lot, you know, about the, so the, so the question is, you know, the, the existence of KMS states of graph system algebras, uh, the, 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 the conditions I, I'm, 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 I must say, I mean, I, I would need to look it up, uh, you know, how it's formulated. But the, I think you know the best reference would be would be in this in this paper on the KMS states on graph system okay. algebras, yeah, and there's there's also uh, I, I I can't you know just tell it uh, like that for, uh, at the moment. Okay. Hey, anybody else? Uh, do you have any? Do you have any suggestion of definition of a quantum group acting on a graph with multiple edges? 
this should be not an original version of Banica, et cetera. Yeah. So imagine you, you have, imagine you have a graph and you want yeah. to have, and you have a graph sister algebra. So imagine that you look at the graph and you say, aha, for such a graph, I should have such a such compact quantum group acting. Yeah. Well, that's a question. Uh, so, Baba, sorry, was the question? Sorry, I. Uh... Okay. So, so, I mean, what is the uh, what is the suggestion of a uh, definition of quantum group acting on a graph with multiple edges? With multiple edges, yes, right. Oh, with multiple edges, right. It should be not uh, in this form. Yes, exactly. Yes. Oh, certainly it shouldn't be in the, not in this form. Um, I think it is an open question. I don't know. Okay. I, I I haven't seen anything, you know, for the. I mean, the this 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 definition is is for the. Uh, I I don't know. But you know, when you have this theorem of I think Moritz uh, Weber and uh, yeah. Schmidt. Um, that equates uh, this quantum isometric group of a uh, graph sister algebra with uh, uh, the quantum symmetry of uh, the graph. I guess a, a possible starting point would be today the graph sister algebra of whatever graph you have with multiple edges, and and then see if the quantum group which will, should exist anyway. Oh uh, yeah, can, yeah, can be translated into the symmetry of, of a graph. And we can push uh, your line of questioning even further. Uh, we have also uh, weighted graphs. So the number of multiple edges can be the square root of pi, not necessarily five or three. And, and you also have quantum graphs. And I believe that for quantum graphs, people have quantum symmetries as well. So there are quantum symmetries of quantum graphs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but, but, but you see, I mean, uh, the, the delicate point here is that I mean, then this is this is this result by Jonathan Manda, Manda uh, namely that the uh, that when it, whenever you consider the quantum symmetry in the sense of Wang, you know, uh, with some possibly restriction like this linear faithful action and so on and so forth, or possibly with KMS state, uh, this final object in the category, then of course you know this. So the 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 quantum symmetry of a of a graph. Here in the sense of Banica, I mean, is a, just an element of this category. It's not necessarily this final element. So of course, uh, so of course, uh, uh, knowing the uh, knowing the sort of the result by Wang. So knowing the quantum symmetry of a graph system algebra in this sense will tell you will, will tell you that you know that this. Uh, the, the symmetry of a graph is is a is a, is, a, is a subgroup of that, but not necessarily the, the, this very object. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to use two channels because my camera is not working okay. on the computer. Uh, so I was wondering, did is it is it do I understand correctly that that this uh, this means that the the quantum monomorphism group is a function of the Cister algebra, because it's the quantum symmetry group of the Cister algebra. Yeah. So this means that if you have two graphs that give the same Cister algebra, they must have the same. Um, they must have the same quantum isomorphism groups. Yeah. Right. So this means that all these things that we have, you know, moves and so on, we can do without changing the the Cister algebra, they will be different graphs, but they will have the same. Yeah, this is this is a very interesting question because I mean, of course, you can have uh, you can have uh, different graphs that give you give you give you the same graph Cister algebra. Right. And uh, there's so uh, so from what I understand, you know, the statement. Of course, you know there are some technical te technical you know assumptions here, and so so this is uh, um, this is this this is also dedicated, but. As, assuming that everything goes well, and you have two different graphs that give you the same system algebra, so there might be the case that you have that they might have possibly. I mean, I don't know, but 
I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't see it uh, excluded that it might have different symmetry, quantum symmetries of a graph, which are sub subgroups, quantum subgroups of a uh, uh, of a quantum symmetry of, of a graph cis algebra. This, I, I think, I mean, this is. I, I wouldn't see it excluded. This is a, but this is a very interesting question, you know, to see whether, I mean, to, to verify it, whether this is true or not. But, but Andre, wait a second. So what's the hypothesis of this theorem of uh, Weber and Schmidt? I'm confused now. So because they proved that it's one and the same thing under some assumptions. Yeah, but then, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I think they, they proved that this is the, uh, that this is the quantum transformation group. I don't think this is a proof that this is a final object in a category. Uh -huh. Because, uh -huh. they, I mean, the final object uh -huh. might not even exist. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yes, now it's clear. Yes, yes, I think, yes. Thank you so much, Andre. Okay, Martin. thank you. I will ask Schmidt. He's he's in Copenhagen, so I'll, I'll okay. corner him. <laughs> so. Hello. Thank you. Uh, I have a question which is maybe uh, a bit uh, off the topic, but I wonder, uh, is there a notion of a graph sister algebra, but for non-commutative graph? Yeah, there is. I don't know about it. So, I mean, okay, I mean, these non-commutative graphs from what I understand, I mean, I very know very little about it. Uh, from what I understand, this is just, you know, I mean, you define it by set of operators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know what would be the notion of, uh, of uh, related system algebra to these graphs. I mean, will you take the, I uh, certainly, I mean, when you have these operators, you, you, you can have some algebra, but is it this? No, but look, I mean, you just write it into Google, quantum graphs and quantum graphs sister algebras, a YouTube movie by Michael Branagh. Yeah, yeah, there's this, there's this, there's this YouTube lecture, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, but uh, short answer, I mean, is, is, has anybody short answer to that? I, I don't remember how it's done, but we had Christian Fort here at Impan some time ago explaining to us how you get uh, such quantum graph sister algebras. But the thing is that these um, quantum graphs, uh, you know, they do not generalize all graphs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more like this Kunz-Krieger stuff and, and uh, again, uh, no multiple edges, probably stuff like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So certain graphs, yeah. Yeah. So it's not a complete generalization. Okay, anybody else? Any uh, question? Yes, can, Go ahead, Ludwig. Yes, yeah, can I have a more primitive question, more basically? So, what is wrong with uh, multiple edges for this sister algebra? Oh, I don't know what's wrong. I mean, I know that, <laughs> I mean, that would be, that would be, I mean, knowing what's wrong with multiple edges would be. Would be probably the first uh, would be to would be the first task to realize what's wrong with that because that would be the first step to 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 go ahead with with doing it for multiple multiple edges. No, 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 no. I mean, Andre, there's a very simple answer. If you remember the definition of the quantum permutation group of Shuzu Wong. Uh, in order for this to give you a compact quantum group, it has to satisfy some properties, okay? In particular, these guys should be sort of like zero and one thingies. And, and, and as long as your epsilon kj is just zero or one, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. But okay. at the moment you put here five or seven, uh, you get something very strange. And this probably will not yield a, a definition of a compact quantum group. So that's just a trivial uh, answer to your question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in this sense, yes. In this sense, okay. yes. But I mean, okay. generally, if you have a graph, have another, you know, okay. so, so, so I, what I understand, I mean, if I, what I understand, you know, as a question of, of Ludwig, I mean, what, uh, how yeah. to, what would be the way, you know, to define something yes, like quantum of symmetry of something with multiple edges, right? Yeah. Well, you have to include square root of pi in the matrix. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, yes. 
Okay, Andre, thank you so no, much. No, still, yes, Piotr wants once more maybe comment, question. Sure. Actually, Piotr, uh, Andre mentioned that as you, as two published spheres, published spheres in general, mm -hmm. were uh, defined the, the spectral triples using the symmetry, but symmetry was actually the dual of the quantum group, maybe the universal enveloping algebra we acting so on. So has anybody checked that this is really SUQ2, for instance, is really a symmetry of the spheres in the sense of the definition of symmetry of uh, you gave a moment ago? Now that's a nice question. I think yes. I think yes. I think, you know, possibly if you look for the, I don't know whether the papers Goswami, I mean, in one of those papers, I don't remember Goswami bomb week, I mean, I, I can dig it up. I mean, I I, I, I think yes. I'm pretty confident that yes, that this is the same. I know because because the, the original definition used the dual, well, used the yes. UQ. But I but I think it is it is still the same definition. Okay, should be should be true. We expect this, but uh, I don't know if it was done explicitly, but okay. Okay, so Andre, thank you very much. I stopped recording. Can I have a comment? Okay. Uh, on this, because so you said that with quantum graphs, the problem is, I, I don't think that with quantum graphs, the problem is with multiple edges. It just uh -huh. like Kuhn's Krieger algebra. So you have no sense yes. of sources. So that's yes. a problem. There's no problem with multiple edges because. So if you have a graph with no sinks and sources, it's determined by its line graph. So you take a graph and you make a line graph out of it, and this graph has no multiple edges, but the graph yeah. system algebra is determined by this line, line graph. So multiple yeah, edges yeah. is not an issue for, for sister algebra of a, of a, of a quantum graph. Okay. That's just, just... Marius, I fully agree. Thank you very much. I stand corrected. Of course, you are right. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. So, so it's still recorded, Mark. It's still recorded. You made it. And now I stop recording. I have to click it.